He was the kind of son every parent hopes for. He was the big brother every little sister and brother dreams of. 19-year-old Efren Marrero was a big kid, six foot two, 285 pounds, older brother to Erica and Ethan. His parents, Frank and Brenda, nicknamed him the Gentle Giant. Now, as he got to be a younger man, you know, he uh, played Little League baseball, he played uh, soccer, he played uh, Pop Warner football. But as, as he transitioned through the years, he found out that with his physique, his built, that football was what he was, you know, cut out to do. Efren dreamed of college football, but to be a starting linebacker, he knew he'd have to be stronger and faster. And he, at that point, said, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to run, I'm going to do all that thing so I can, you know, I want to play linebacker, though. I don't want to be on the line. Soon, the Marrero saw a transformation in Efren. The baby fat was gone. For the first time, he had chiseled muscles. He said to me, hey, Dad, I can bench 350 pounds. And I'm thinking, my goodness, that's, that's a lot of weight, you know. But, but I, I thought, I didn't think anything, I thought he was just doing naturally, or it was, he was going to the gym, and, but, it, but it never dawned on me that, uh, you know, he used to do 225, 250 pounds, and that was a 100-pound increase. You know, how did he get that? How did he do that? Then, Frank and Brenda started noticing changes in Efren's once gentle behavior. He was working really hard to do well in school, and he worked really hard on this English paper. And Erica, she needed to go on the computer, and I, she accidentally deleted a paper um, of Efren's that needed to be turned in that day. And uh, he got so angry that he went upstairs, tore up her scrapbook, and then slammed the downstairs door so hard that he broke it. That was very uncharacteristic of Efren to do that. We just thought that it was a young man who uh, had anger problems, at that, and, and I was trying to help him to manage that at the time, to do that. It didn't, it didn't occur to me that... It didn't occur to steroids. Never just, that just never crossed her mind. One day last summer, Brenda confronted Efren. Why was he being so secretive about what he was doing on his computer? And I said, Efren, you know, what are you doing? And he goes, well, I have something to tell you. And uh, he goes, I, um, I'm doing steroids. Efren's temper was out of control. His parents noticed he was sleeping more and acting paranoid. Now that Efren admitted using steroids, the Marrero sought counseling and convinced Efren to quit cold turkey. But then, on September 26... It was a beautiful Sunday morning. It was very sunny outside. And so I said, well, why don't we go to church at 5.30 because we'll do the evening mass and that way we can get the errands and all that out of the way in the morning. Efren wanted to stay behind, but asked his mother if she would pick up a new video game for him. I just looked at Efren, I smiled, and I said, yeah, see what, you, see what I can do for you, Efren. Yeah. And that was the last time I saw him. The Moreros came home to a scene in their bedroom that changed their lives forever. I walked into my bedroom, and I saw Efren lying face down on her bedroom floor. And then... Really loud. I went down on the floor and I put my face on Efren and on his forehead and I just was saying, Efren, Efren, oh my God. Yeah. And I knew he was gone. Yeah. Um, he was blue and he was cold. And I, uh, I left the room. I thought I was going to get sick. So yeah. during that time, Frank ran up the stairs. Yeah, I ran upstairs. I heard her screaming like again. I never heard a scream like that in my life. It was a scream of bloody murder. As I come into our bedroom, I see our son lying down on the floor. And right next to our bed, he has a towel around him. He's naked with a towel around him. And, uh, and he's down there. And I, too, thought he was dead. But I said, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to help him. I'm going to help him, you know? Efren, three weeks shy of his 20th birthday, was dead. He had found his father's pistol and shot himself in the head. An autopsy later confirmed it was suicide. Brenda and Frank still struggle for answers. I look at all the other things that you would associate with suicide and none of those are there. The only thing that's there is steroids. It's the only thing that I could come up with.
There's no doubt in uh, our minds that steroids kill Efren. The Moreros blame themselves. They believe they tragically missed the signs of steroid use. Now we look back and we look at all those signs. I mean, to the T, to the T, every one of them was there. It was right in front of our eyes. Efren was such a good kid with a good heart. And he was not only my son, but he was my buddy. Every day I, I think about him and just his laugh, really, and his smile. And um, the way that he hugged me and protected me. And I know that even though he's not here physically, he's here in spirit. I know that my son is looking down on us right now, very proud of his parents. Very proud of what we're doing and very proud that we won't step forward. Because he's telling us, Dad, Mom, get out there. You need to tell them, because this killed me.